My name is Roberto Giuliani. I am a medical geneticist. I was born in Porto Alegre in the south of Brazil, and I had the opportunity very early in my career to contact uh, MPS patients as a junior research assistant in biochemistry. And uh, this was in 1973, so 45 years ago. And uh, since then, I, I have been working with uh, biochemical genetics and MUC polysaccharidosis. There are some situations that we will never forget. So one was a patient that was uh, diagnosed as MPS patient because he had high urinary gags. This was in the 80s. It was very difficult to assay the enzyme for MPS2 because it needed a, a very special um, technique that we're not, uh, uh, we had not on our lab. So we did the technique for MPS1 and for MPS7. MPS7 was normal, so no MPS7, but MPS1 was slightly below normal range. So we thought, well, this may be MPS1. And we labeled that patient as MPS1. Some years later, we were able to finally uh, assay the enzyme for MPS2. And then we assayed and it was very, very deficient. So we had to relabel that patient now as MPS2. And this changed completely the life of the family. At that time, there was no therapy for MPS1, for MPS2, for any MPS. So it's not so uh, important to have an exact uh, diagnosis. But uh, when we realized the patient was MPS2, there was already a therapy for MPS1. So this was, a, uh, the family became very sad because now they had, a, now that there, there is a therapy for the disease, the patient has not more that particular type of disease. So this is very important. So before starting a specific therapy to be very sure about the the, the specific diagnosis. The MPS patients early on, they have these kind of general problems, general pediatric problems like respiratory inf infection, otitis, hernia, enlarged um, uh, tonsils or adenoids. So this, they do not, we never think in a rare disease. We think in some pediatric um, situation that uh, we will resolve uh, very shortly. But uh, with the repetition, we start to think on something or some disease behind these manifestations. It takes a time to, to f let us think on a rare disease. And uh, this is normal because we always we think in more frequent uh, situations than in a rare disease. But there is a gap between the start of um, symptoms and the diagnosis. And this was not that important in the past because we do not have the specific therapy. But now it's, it's really critical because if you start the therapy earlier, you have better results. This is very well demonstrated. So we need to improve our, our diagnostic ability. And this is uh, something uh, important. And you will notice that uh, uh, in, at least in Brazil, when we did a survey on MPS patients uh, from the first symptoms to diagnose in almost five years of interval. And during this time, the, the family looked uh, uh, for help to nine different specialists in average. And so this is uh, something that we should take in, into account. In genetic disease, the patient is not the, that patient, but it's the family. So I, I remember a, a family that I, I, I received a sample from a patient from Bolivia. And then we diagnose an MPS2. And then I asked to the doctor, are there similar cases in the family? And he told me, yes, there are two more, but they are maybe similar things. So he sent me the sample and also MPS2. And then we, we said, well, this should be, a, this is a big family. He has many other brothers and sisters. Let's have a look on the family. So we, uh, I went there with this doctor to this very small city in Bolivia. And there were, it was a huge family. And we were able to identify other patients and are able to identify, mainly identify uh, um, women that are carriers for the disease and have risk 
to have babies with the disease. So we had an opportunity to intervene and to provide genetic counseling, therapy for the patients that are diagnosed, but also counseling for the family, identify the, the, the sisters that are carriers, the sisters that are not carriers and do not have any risk. So this could help a lot when you think in the family as a whole. I have learned many lessons along the time, but I think that there are two that are more important. One is to provide information about disease and about the diagnostic process as wide as possible, and to make the diagnostic tests easily accessible to the, to the physicians, to the families. And this is something that we have been working in Brazil, providing information in one side and providing the access to diagnostic tests in the other side. And this, uh, with these two simple measures, we are able to more than double the diagnostic rate of MPS. And I think this uh, is very important.